Hello fellow teachers, Jay Fulmer here. So excited to talk to you about the lesson for Ephesians chapter 6. This is the armor of God. This is a lesson I look forward to every time we get a chance to teach it. Just love it. The first part of the lesson talks about Satan's tactics. There's some great questions. There's some good preparation. But the main meat of the lesson is going to be a chance for the students to identify what the armor of God is and then talk about what it means in our modern day. So let's skip down here to this statement. The armor of God is a metaphor or symbol for the protection Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ offer us. So that sets the stage. Now you could ask the students questions like, why do we need armor? What's the battle that we face? What kind of dangers do we need to be protected from? The next activity in the call-out box is to provide a handout so that students can uh, identify the portions of the armor. Now, they could also draw them in their journals. And if you've got students that are pretty savvy in drawing, great. You can certainly use this handout, but there's something exciting about seeing someone in the armor. So there are a number of other resources on the church's website, and I've chosen a couple that I think you might find helpful. First of all, this is one from the September 2014 New Era magazine. It's really great and particularly great because it applies the armor of God to a student's modern situation. Each of these graphics link to a PDF file and the PDF allows you to read the text more clearly. It looks, well, it looks really cool, but all the text is also right here in the article. Let me point out a couple of features. One, it talks about the devil's darts, which it uses as a, an acronym for dedicated assault on the resolve of teenage saints. I really like that. You could create a printout of this or just talk about some of these topics in class. Here we have some examples. Remember we were talking before about what are the dangers that we're trying to be protected from uh, and what kinds of things do they face? Here are some examples of things that can get a discussion going. How much is swearing an issue at your school? What about bullying, drugs and alcohol, or cheating? This might help launch the students into a discussion of other dangers that they face that they need to be protected from, that an armor of God would protect them from. Then it talks about the armor. Here we have the Lord's side, standard issue defensive equipment, a.k.a. armor. There's a great description of each of the pieces of armor here that may help you in your discussion with the students, either to help you to explain them better or help your students to discover them. So, uh, loins girt about with truth and feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Here's some things. Breastplate of righteousness and shield of faith. Sword of the spirit. These descriptions and other scriptures associated with them can help you in your classroom discussion. But check these out. Perhaps your students would be interested in coming up with additional gear. For example, night vision goggles. And then it gives a description of what that can mean. Also, communication devices, radar, GPS locator. Something I love about the idea of us modern soldiers having a GPS locator is it reminds me that we can never be lost from the Lord. Here we have a quote from President Uchtdorf, which says, we may feel lost without a compass. God's love encompasses us completely. Think about what a GPS does, or we don't really use those anymore, but on a phone, when we've got maps, if we change course, it always recalculates a new course. There's always a way to get to our destination. Our choices may make it a longer trip or even a more difficult trip, but there's always a way there. The GPS, in other words, the Lord's love, will help to get us wherever we need to be to get to our destination. So, great quotes, great pieces. I think this would be a wonderful supplemental thing for your class. Let me talk about the graphic for a minute. Here's another article from the Come Follow Me. I really like this image because it looks, I don't know, action-y, and it's actually got the uh, fiery darts in there. So I've taken the liberty of turning it into a handout for you. 
this handout is labeled so the students can label it, but it has the image from this particular graphic from last year's Come Follow Me. There will be a link to it in the description of the video if you want to use it for your class. But as the students read the scriptures and label what each of these things represents, the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, there's lots of room here for them to write notes about something that they learned, not only about the armor, but take a look at these questions a little bit later in the lesson. Back to the lesson manual, as you scroll down, there are these discussion questions, but look at number three. How do we put on this piece of the Lord's armor to receive his protection? That would be a great thing to, to write next to the labeling on this chart. Also, please don't forget this fantastic question right here under putting on the Savior's whole armor. I, I love each of these three questions. Make time for them. What dangers do you see with only wearing a portion of the armor? This should be great because we've already had a discussion about what these things protect us against. Really love these two parts. This one right here. Why do you think Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ want you to be completely protected? And then, what will you do each day to more fully put on the whole armor of God? That's something else the students can write on their sheet. We get to learn something really amazing about Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ. The fact that they want us to be protected shows how much they love us and want us to succeed gloriously. Let me offer one more suggestion. If you want to, it might be interesting to compare the armor of God with worldly armor. We could start that discussion by talking about Goliath. Goliath had the best armor the world had to offer. Here we've got a cartoon version from the church's website that shows some great imagery. There's also a video about that too, but you may not want to take the time to show the video. But perhaps these graphics, including the armor and what was used to destroy that armor. That armor was so grand that no one else would fight Goliath. But one of these little smooth stones took down that armor. Not much protection. It seems like a lot of protection, but not much. I'm going to put the link for three resources if you want to talk about Goliath as an example of worldly armor and what it promises versus what it delivers against the power of God. There's a great piece that's used in one of our manuals about David and Goliath where you could talk about his armor. And then there's the cartoon one and then this great image by Ted Henninger so I'll link those in the description if you want to use those for a discussion about worldly armor compared to godly armor. Boy, I sure hope you have a great time as you guys discuss the armor of God.